It's the Full Force Movie News Burst, brought to you by GeneralsJoesReborn.com with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. Lorenzo de Bonaventura has been discussing the G.I. Joe and Transformers movie franchises in detail with Uprox. In a recent interview with Mike Ryan at Uproxx, the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins producer Lorenzo de Bonaventura discussed both the G.I. Joe and Transformers franchises in some depth, even going as far as to give out some details on future projects, as well as ideas and scripts that didn't quite make it. The opening questions revolved around Bonaventura's admission that he was probably responsible for the recent Cobra Commander hood embargo at Hasbro, saying, I have this funny reaction about Cobra Commander, which is he kind of looks like he's from the KKK. I probably was the first person who went, are you guys sure? Doesn't he look a little like from the KKK? And that everybody's looking at me like, how dare you say that? Some of the Hasbro guys were horrified. It was one of the reasons. The idea of why did you want to cover up his face was also interesting to us. What does he look like, yeah? I think I might have affected that because I'm just like, guys, it's pretty obvious to me. They kept saying, you have to put it in, you have to put it in. I'm like, I will not put it in, whatever the vibe of that is. Quite sexy at the end there, wasn't it? Following that, he explained the confusion over the spin-off or reboot issue that has been making fans go back and forth since the film was announced a few years ago, and blamed that on poor communication from the company itself. I don't know how to answer that one because I guess I don't know. I don't know why that hasn't gotten out there. Well, it's probably too late for our messaging, but it's never too late. We'll work on that. One of the most revealing parts of the interview came when questioned about future G.I. Joe movies. There's a couple things we have in development right now for G.I. Joe, which is not really origin stories. It is and it isn't. But what is interesting is it takes a G.I. Joe and essentially brands him a traitor. And then the story is, how does he prove he's not? And what I liked about that idea was how personal it was. I think that was the goal of Snake Eyes, to find a size of a movie that made you go, okay, we have time to develop the character. The burden of spending a lot of money is that it demands a different kind of movie. In this case, relatively speaking, in Hollywood terms, it's a middle price movie that allows you to spend time with the character and really explore what's driving this guy. This could be related to the Chuckles movie we've heard rumours of, and that could be absolutely outstanding. I would love to see a film based on the Joe's deep undercover operative especially in this particular scenario. What did stand out was his stance on building a universe. I'm a little antithetical to this idea of planning the universe. I find there's a certain rigidity to that. That doesn't appeal to me at all. This is a little disappointing when you think just how well the Marvel movies have fared with having a clear roadmap in their shared cinematic universe. Obviously they will all be connected going forward, but you have to wonder how well it will work if they aren't creating some bigger goal to work towards. What is interesting is that he and Henry Golding would be fine with having the actor play Snake Eyes in the future when his voice and face are no longer required, responding, Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, for sure. He might not like wearing that helmet all the time. I remember Ray Park several times taking that thing off and he was all sweat when he took it off. I think you want to get to that place where you see the helicopter crash, and we'll pick a more modern war and see that transformation. I don't know where, but I guess if we're successful enough, and I don't know how to measure success right now, that's what's so tricky. I would have guessed that in the third movie. That's when we would have done that. This is actually very cool indeed. I would love to have three or more movies in this franchise, and if he loses his voice and face in the third, then at least that would be even more impactful to the character. I could honestly see that working if Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins is successful. Lorenzo went on to discuss a pitch he had for a Joe movie that got rejected. It's funny, there's 10 pages of one draft that got the tone exactly where I thought it should be, and I gave it to every director and every writer, and then they rejected it. The short version of it was, one of the Joes is taken, the command says, nothing we could do, four or five of them banned to say, all right, we're taking our leave, they dress up in civvies and they go into a territory, let's call it Valverde. Laughs. There you go, Valverde. Right, an environment in South America, the three borders. Do you know what I'm thinking of? A triple frontier? The scene is they arrive, they have no money, they walk into a police station, they look at the most wanted posters on the wall. The police, the captain, says, what are you doing? And they go, well, we'll be back. We're going to get this guy. And our guys are smart enough. They've tapped into the phone line. So they know where this wanted guy is, and then there's a hard cut. The end of the day, they walk in, they've got their guy, and the police captain is like, what? So it's clever, it's fun, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it shows great competence actually, and it doesn't require firepower to show the ingenuity of the team. An interesting take for sure, and it is nice to hear a number of different scenarios that they've tried to work on for the brand. 
Finally, he was asked whether a G.I. Joe Transformers team-up was on the cards, and his response was very interesting. You know, the truth of the matter is, the studio has always been against that. Every regime that's been at Paramount is against it because it's taking two franchises and making them one, but I think it's inevitable. This makes a lot of sense now when you think of all the possible opportunities they've had to do crossover movies. Even with simple homages and subtle nods, they've still missed good chances to put the two brands in the same universe. And it makes me laugh too that even though Paramount were against the idea of the two franchises, franchises becoming one, a writer's room was created to do just that a number of years ago. He also explained that the current director of the next Transformers movie would be tailor-made to do it. Stephen Cappell, who's directing Transformers right now, is a huge G.I. Joe fan too, and he was like, why aren't you doing that? Everyone was like, well, try to make a Transformers movie really good, then we'll talk about that. Maybe Steven will be the one to crack though, because he loves them both so much. I would take that in a heartbeat, especially knowing he's a big fan of G.I. Joe. Anyway, those were the highlights from the interview, and it really does paint a picture of where Paramount is currently at with the brand. I for one hope we get multiple movies following Snake Eyes, and for those of you who watched it last night, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, especially Diana Davis and the other attendees at the LA Fan First screening last night, who got to see Henry Golding and Samara Weaving, you lucky devils. Right, that's it for now, I'm sure I will see you all very soon, because that's my life now. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force <laughs>